Here in America, the three row crossover has solidified itself for being the family car of choice for many Americans out there. Now, unfortunately for Jeep, the company has been out of this segment for over a decade when the last Jeep Commander was phased out back in 2010. Now, thankfully, Jeep has been working on a viable replacement and it is here now. This vehicle right behind me is its replacement. This is the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. The L is the long wheelbase version that offers standard three row seating. It's built off of an entirely new platform that it also shares with Alfa Romeo. Jeep has given it much more confident styling on the outside. There's a completely new interior with new tech features, more luxury, and under the hood, they're launching with either a choice of V6 or V8 engine option. So if you guys have been in the market for a three row Jeep, was this new Jeep Grand Cherokee L worth the wait? Stay tuned to find out. Now Jeep says they took their time with the new Grand Cherokee L because this also needed to be a Jeep, which means it also needs to be trail rated. It needs to have all the heritage that's backed by Jeep because the Grand Cherokee has been in production for nearly 30 years. This is now in its fifth generation and we've been waiting a decade for an all new version of the Grand Cherokee. The old one over there literally would dates back to 2010 where it was built off of a Mercedes Benz ML platform, which again, the ML has been redesigned over the years a few times. So now we've got the all new version of the Grand Cherokee and even though this is the three row version, Jeep says the two row should be coming out very, very soon. We may have saw one here at their proving grounds that was camouflaged. But since I've got the three row version here, I want to talk about the styling because like every other Jeep, you've got the corporate seven slot grill. Jeep has kind of made some changes to the grill to make it more modern. This one here is the Summit Reserve trim. This is the highest trim that you can get on the Grand Cherokee. So you have a lot more polished chrome accents in the front. There's kind of this interesting texture in the grill. Jeep has also very nicely integrated the front camera and washer uh, and sensors all in the front grill area. You can't even tell unless you are looking for it. You can see there's another radar sensor right there. You have to really be looking for it. So Jeep really uh, stressed the details there with making this look a lot better. And in terms of the headlights, Jeep has been kind of making their headlights slimmer and slimmer on all the Grand Cherokees. Full LED headlights are gonna be standard. You also get LED daytime running lights and turn signals, LED low and high beams. You also have this really nice looking LED fog light. The fact that they put all LED lighting even on the base Laredo trim really shows that Jeep wants to be taken seriously as a premium uh, player. I also really like the front fascia the Summit Reserve and Summit gives you a slightly unique front end compared to the other trims. It just is designed to compete, compete more with luxury oriented models. And that's the cool thing about the Grand Cherokees. You can compare it to cars like a Kia Telluride or a Honda Pilot, but then if you want, you can spec it up to this higher trim where it could kind of go head to head with vehicles like the BMW X7 and the Mercedes-Benz GLS. Now, in terms of the dimensions, this is where the Grand Cherokee L gets a little tricky because Jeep just introduced the new Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, which I'll be driving sometime next month. However, this model here is designed to slot below them because it starts at around $38,000 plus destination. Uh, and at 204.9 inches long, this is about 15 inches longer versus the Grand Cherokee right behind this thing. This is about six to 10 inches longer than most of the competitors like the Honda Pilot, the Kia Telluride. And because of that, it does give the Jeep a little bit more of an edge in terms of interior space. And you also have the presence to it because this is the same size as something like the Chevrolet Traverse, the Buick Enclave. So this is on the bigger end. It's wheelbase at 121.7 inches long is around seven inches longer than the old Grand Cherokee. And in typical Jeep fashion, you can, of course, get this vehicle with an adjustable air suspension. The standard ground clearance is eight and a half. This one here with the quadra lift air suspension will raise it up to a maximum of nearly 11 inches at 10.9 inches, which Jeep says this vehicle is capable of fording up to 24 inches of water, nearly or around two feet of water, which would make it class leading. Now, in terms of the wheels, uh, this one here being the Summit Reserve has a 21 inch wheel wrapped in 275, 45 with tires. These are the largest wheels ever to be fitted on a Grand Cherokee. This is the only trim to get it. Uh, Jeep also offers a choice between a 17, 18 or a 20 inch wheel. The regular Summit will have a 21 inch wheel. So this is how you're going to be able to tell that this is a Summit Reserve from those 21 inch unique finished wheels. Now in terms of color combinations, this uh, silver color is pretty conservative. It looks good, of course, with the two-tone black roof. This two-tone option is only available on the overland and up trims. If you want to get a limited, you cannot get the two-tone roof. I think I really like the way this combination looks. You can see it's got a very nice squared off look. This one here also has a pano roof, which you can get the pano roof on the limited and up trims. It's standard, of course, on the Summit Reserve. And there's this neat little detail here where you can see there's like a continuous piece here of metal. It actually blends in more with the silver. On a black car, it's more noticeable. This kind of helps to create this interesting effect here with the styling. This is what Jeep's designer says. It actually connects and keeps going across the entire length of the vehicle. That kind of helps to shrink it 
in you know some people's eyes, but you can't deny the fact that this is a fairly large vehicle. This is one of the largest ones in the segment. Now, looking at the rear, you can see the taillights, full LED, even on the base trim, which is nice. Um, and they also have kind of like that slim down look. This vehicle looks really impressive in person. This was my first time seeing it. It looks very much like a luxury SUV. You can see there's a nice little Summit badge over here. Um, the exhaust system has, is slightly integrated into the bumper. The one thing that I, I'm surprised, this one here has the V8. You can't tell the difference on the outside between the V6 or the V8 until you start it up or lift the hood of this vehicle, uh, which we'll show you guys in just a moment. Now, in terms of the cargo area, this is a much bigger vehicle than the regular Grand Cherokee. And Jeep says the third row is standard. This one here has a power folding third row. With the third row seat up, you get around 17.2 cubic feet of space. So this is very much class competitive with a lot of the competitors. It's actually on the higher end. This has the same kind of space as something like the Volkswagen Atlas. Underneath here, there is a little bit of storage here, although I have seen some competitors give you a little bit more in terms of storage space. If you want to fold down the seats, you can see it is a power folding third row. This is optional, standard on the Summit Reserve. When you fold down the third row seat, which it's pretty quick. It also pr produces a pretty flat floor. You get around 46.9 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good uh, as well. This is um, more, about 10 cubic feet more than what you're gonna find in a lot of the compact SUVs. And you can also fold down the second row seats. And when you do that, Jeep says you get a maximum of 84.7 cubic feet. That's, that's roughly 20 more cubic feet than what you're gonna find in the standard two row Grand Cherokee. So this has the kind of space that buyers demand in this you know, larger three row segment. All right, so now let's move on to the interior of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Now, first of all, Jeep has been really known to deliver really nice interiors over the years, and this one here takes it to another level. Um, the interior design is absolutely beautiful. This one here is the Summit Reserve, which means you have 16-way multi-adjustable front seats with heating, cooling, massage. I mean, this seat, I would expect to find it in like a BMW or a Mercedes, and it's sitting here in a Jeep, and you also have this Palermo a Palermo leather interior, which supposedly is even softer than Napa leather, and the seats themselves are just really plush. So getting inside, let me shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it's got a new Jeep key fob, uh, which looks good. It also works really well, apparently, with the new Jeep connected app, um, which allows you to remotely control this vehicle from your phone. The button to fire up the engine is over here, where you'd expect it to be. And hearing this vehicle start up, you can see the starter, the startup chime has not changed. So I'm surprised that Jeep didn't actually give us a new chime. That would have been a nice little detail. But that's a small complaint because look at the rest of this cabin. I mean, the Summit Reserve model can go toe to toe with the best from BMW and Mercedes. The dash here, you can see, has this really new, interesting kind of wing design in the way that the the dash is kind of laid out and you have real stitching with contrast stitching on the dash over here there's genuine uh, open pore wood there's real metal trim there's piano black plastic there's real leather here even as you go onto the center console it flows really nicely of course with the piano black accents the door panel also has really nice leather which is really soft and comfortable um, you have two-person memory on both the driver and the passenger seats and if you guys want to massage there's a button here you can see there's five different levels of massage. You have three different intensity settings and it's on both front seats. So the massaging seats you can get on the overland and up trims, but this is the one that you're gonna wanna get if you guys want the full luxury experience. Now in terms of the interior, you can see you've got two 10 inch monitors. The digital display here is 10 inches. This is gonna be standard on even the base Laredo. It's also slightly customizable. So you can kind of uh, make the Speedo and Tack a little bit smaller. It's got night vision and a heads up display, which is optional. Uh, and if you want, you can kind of customize this and change what you want to see here, which is all really nice. The graphics also are kind of new. You can put the actual full GPS in this screen right here, which it just takes a second, but when it loads up, it's very Audi-esque, although it doesn't have the same kind of virtual cockpit, cockpit display of the Audi, but still, this is a really, really nice you know, upgrade over the previous generation. And this right here is the Uconnect 5 head unit. It has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, it's a 10.1 inch screen. This is optional, standard on this trim, around $1,000 to $1,800 more, depending on which trim. And like I said earlier, it has wireless Apple CarPlay. So as you can see, there's the CarPlay. It takes up the entire screen. It's very quick and responsive. The graphics look good. It has wireless over the air updates. So that's everything that you kind of expect in today's tech. And when I put the vehicle in reverse, you can see it gives you the full 360 surround view camera. This vehicle also has the ability to automatically parallel park and perpendicular park itself. And the graphics you can see are all just really, really nice. So I have very little complaints with this system here. There is a slight learning curve, but the touch response is really good. 
Um, it has all the different you know media sources you could want. There are some times where I notice it is a little slow to adjust or to change to between buckets, but with over there updates, Jeep will keep this you know constantly improving over the years. So this is a really nice addition. Over here, you can see there are some um, hard buttons for your tri-zone or quad-zone climate control system. You have a wireless phone charging pad, which this is available on even the base trim. So Jeep doesn't limit you to get the highest trim to get the wireless phone charger. You got four USB charging ports over there. There's a nice little door here that closes that will hide your phone and whatever you'd like to hide. Your drive mode selector is this little knob, this little toggle right here. This is the air suspension toggle where you can raise this vehicle up and down. Up to four inches total, Jeep says. The transmission selector is this rotary wheel. You have your four wheel drive low range transfer case here. You can also put this vehicle into neutral where you could theoretically flat tow it. And there's a nice little area here for cup holders um, with a nice little lid that closes, closes to hide whatever you'd like to hide there. You can see the center console offers two levels of storage. Um, there's some ambient lighting in here. In fact, the ambient lighting in this cabin, Jeep says, can adjust in 30 different colors and you can also adjust the intensity. So that's all what you kind of expect in this segment. The steering wheel also is a really nice looking three spoke design. It's not the two spoke design that you saw in the new Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. The steering wheel itself is also power tilt and telescoping. That's pretty nice. Not typically something you find in the segment. The horn has a really nice sound, so I think Jeep has uh, got the tone right for the size of this vehicle. And you also have some really nice touches in here, like all LED lighting in the cabin. You have a really nice um, suede material on the headliner. This massive panoramic sunroof is standard on this trim. It's around a $2,000 extra on the limited and up trims. And really, Jeep has pulled out all the stops here. I mean, compared to the new Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, which I haven't driven yet or sat in, this is very luxury oriented. I believe the Wagoneer will have like four screens in this car, which could be overkill, but this is going to basically deliver a lot of the tech and luxury features that buyers demand. And it feels really spacious. Now, the one thing I do want to mention very briefly before we end the scene, the Macintosh audio system. It's 19 speakers, over 1900 watts of power. You can see it's got the uh, tweeters here on the dash and you've got these metal accented speakers. It sounds really good. You know, those five, $6,000 systems you find in German cars, it rivals those systems, but Jeep gives it to you as standard in this trim. And it's around $1,800 extra if you guys go for the regular Summit instead of the Summit Reserve. So Jeep has not had a proper three row family SUV for quite some time. And getting into the second row, you can see the legroom appears a little tight. However, this slides back and when it does, you can see there is a pretty nice 39 inches of legroom back here. At five foot seven, this is pretty comparable to a lot of the competitors like the Honda Pilot, the Kia Telluride, the Volkswagen Atlas. I also love these captain's chairs. You could not get this, of course, on a Grand Cherokee previously. It includes this nice center console that offers basically pretty deep storage in here. It's pretty, it's pretty identical to what you get in the front seats along with some storage over here and cup holders. The seats over here in the second row are also heated and cooled. So that was something that Kia and Hyundai were only putting on the Telluride and Palisade. Jeep also offers it on the Summit Reserve trim of the uh, Grand Cherokee L, which is nice. You have quad zone climate. So each seat here has its own climate function. You can see I have my temperature set to 68. This seat on uh, next to me has it set to 60 along with these hard buttons here. There's four more USB ports a standard power outlet over there, which is nice. You have rear seat air vents here, here, uh, and you have, of course, a really nice view uh, out from this panoramic sunroof. The Summit Reserve also includes these nice manual sun shades to help block out a little bit more sun. Material quality is also really high quality. Lots of that, you know, stitched leather, the real wood. It's even leather on this back door here, which is all very nice. The metal speakers all look really expensive and classy. Now getting into the third row, I wanna show you guys that real quick because some competitors give you like a button you can push that catapults the seat forward. Jeep doesn't do that. Instead, you got to pull this lever over here. And when you do that, the seat kind of moves out of the way and it gives you a lot of space to get back here. Now, obviously you wouldn't get back here this way, but for demonstration pur purposes, I'm going to get back here. And this is with the second row captain's chairs all the way back. So I could ask the, the front seat or this passenger here to move their seat up, but I don't really need to. I will say I'm five foot seven, like I said, and I actually have a good amount of space back here. My head isn't touching the ceiling. Uh, this is not wide enough to seat three across. So this is only a two people in the back seat. Some competitors offer a three across. I'm surprised that Jeep didn't do that, but I believe the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer will seat up to eight. And in terms of materials, this is actually a soft padded area here where your elbows address. You have two more USB ports on each side. You have rear seat air vents and Jeep says you get around 30 inches of leg room back here, which is pretty good. So I could be comfortable back here on a you know hour long trip. This has more space than most of its competitors. So I think Jeep took their time with a three row and they did it right because you can fit average size adults back here. 
Now underneath the hood of the new Grand Cherokee, this is where Jeep actually played it safe because at launch we're having essentially two carryover engines from the previous generation. The base engine will be the company's 3.6 liter Pentastar naturally aspirated V6. It actually makes a little bit less power this year, 290 horsepower and 257 pound-feet of torque. That torque figure is pretty light considering the weight of this vehicle. It all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission. Rear-wheel drive is standard. Jeep offers three different four-wheel drive systems. The highest versions will have a low-range transfer case an electronic limited slip locking rear differential. Now, the upgraded engine that most of you probably want to go for if you plan on towing heavy loads or you just want the added torque is this engine here. This is the 5.7 liter naturally aspirated Hemi V8 with their cylinder on demand multi-displacement system so it can run on four cylinders depending on the load. In this vehicle, it makes 357 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. So the horsepower is not that much more, but that torque figure is significantly more than the V6. And this is what's going to give this car more of an effortless luxury feel. It still uses an eight-speed automatic transmission uh, and fuel economy. The V6 is rated to get 18 city, 25 highway. I don't have final figures yet for the V8, but the old one was rated at 1422. Look on the screen. We'll put a little annotation there for the final figures of the V8 when Jeep gives us those exact numbers. In terms of the weight, Jeep says that they worked hard to reduce the weight of this vehicle. Uh, the hood, the liftgate are all aluminum. There are some, some suspension pieces that are aluminum. They've actually reduced the weight by around 175 pounds versus the old model. As this one sits though, it weighs a little over 5,000 pounds. So even though this is a lot bigger, we're talking 15 inches bigger than the old Grand Cherokee, this weighs the same. So that's a pretty incredible feat for Jeep to do. And I'm very impressed with that. In terms of towing, the V6 will tow a maximum of 6,200 pounds, while the V8 will tow a maximum of 7,200 pounds, which Jeep is quick to point out that that is class leading. So we're finally in the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L, and this model here that we're starting in is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, the base engine. Remember, it's an extra 3,300 bucks if you guys want the V8, which the V8 is probably what you're gonna want if you guys plan on doing a lot of towing and hauling, um, because this powertrain, while it is a decent powertrain, I'm noticing definitely doesn't have the torque that you probably need for a vehicle of this application. It is sluggish feeling at times, especially out on the highway. I mean, 290 horsepower is good, but this is still a 5,000 pound beast. You know, despite the fact that Jeep was able to reduce the weight by 175 pounds, she is not light. And <laughs> it probably feels like a zero to 60 time of nine seconds is where I'm thinking. So it's definitely wanting a little bit more power. But the good news about the Grand Cherokee is that we're finally on a new platform. Remember, this is the uh, platform that it shares with Alfa Romeo, it's the Giorgio platform. And this thing feels solid out on the road, despite the fact that we've got these massive 21 inch wheels, we've got that uh, air suspension, it rides like a cloud in here. It's so smooth, it's so quiet. I'm sitting here getting a massage, the seats are heated and cooled. This reserve model has the Palermo leather, which is even more nice than Napa leather, if you can believe it. Uh, and it feels like luxury in this car. So it's amazing to me how Jeep has just gotten so luxurious in that regard. You don't necessarily need to get a luxury badge. Jeep is trying to become that. Um, and it really feels like it out on the road. Now the transmission, or there are several drive modes here. I'm actually, I tried it in its auto mode. Let's switch over to sport here. Um, and if I just put my foot down, you can see super snappy and quick eight speed automatic. This is the ZF unit. I don't even have to floor it though for it to shift this fast. If I just do it part throttle, it'll quickly downshift. I mean, this is the kind of responsiveness that I wanted out of the ZF nine speed that I tried in competitor vehicles like the Honda Pilot or the Nissan Pathfinder, the new one. Um, and this is probably one of the most responsive versions of the ZF that I've driven. So I'm really glad that Jeep tuned the transmission right because it needs to for this engine that is a little bit lacking in power. So we'll switch into the V8 later on. We're gonna try the V8 and see if it's worth the extra $3,300. So now we are in the V8 model, which... Ooh. Oh yeah. For an extra $3,200, $3,300, the V8 gives you like 70 more horsepower and over 130 more pound-feet of torque. It has the same ZF eight-speed automatic. It is so responsive and so satisfying. And listen to that noise. Man, you know, this 5.7 liter Hemi is getting up there in the age department, but it is still a very satisfying engine. It just gives me the performance that I was looking for. The V6 is perfectly fine for probably 80%, but if you're spending the money for this Grand Cherokee L, you gotta check the box for the V8. It includes, or you also can get these paddles on the wheel on both, and they're pretty responsive. 
but I find that it's more satisfying to just kind of put your foot down because with this car, even if I just do a part throttle, it's so quick to downshift and give me the gear that I'm looking for. And I would say zero to 60 for this one probably feels like under seven seconds. I'll have to, again, adjust or do a final testing when I, when I have this vehicle back home for a week to drive, but it is very, very impressive with the V8. Just, you gotta go for the V8. If you're gonna be towing heavy loads, you're gonna be carrying a lot of people, you're gonna wanna get this engine. Now, those of you who want a little bit more, I mean, uh, Jeep carried over the, the base 3.6 and of course is 5.7. Jeep says that there are, they are planning to introduce a plug-in hybrid and a full electric version of this car soon. Uh, we don't know when they're gonna reveal it, but my guess is stay tuned for sometime next year for the full electric version of this car. But you know, the V8 is definitely my pick. And for me, if you're gonna spend, you know, 50, 60,000 on dollars on this, you may as well take the option and spend another three grand to go for the V8, because this is the instance where you could have had a V8 and you should have gotten it. Yeah, so hopping in back into the V6, the V8 is definitely the way you wanna go. This just feels fine if you're only gonna have yourself and maybe one another one additional passenger, but imagine fitting this car with you know seven people and all of their stuff or towing 6,000 pounds. I wouldn't even imagine to tow with this V6. It just doesn't have the torque. So I'm surprised the Jeep didn't wanna introduce like a turbocharged V6 to give you that extra torque, but again, they have the 5.7, um, which is gonna give you the extra power that you want. So one of the new tech features that Jeep is very proud of with the new Grand Cherokee is their new active driver assistance tech feature. Now this is gonna come close to a level two system. However, unlike some competitors from Ford, from General Motors, it is not a hands-off system. Jeep still wants you to keep your hands on the wheel, but it does a really good job of keeping you centered in the lane and it'll find um, the lane markers very quickly and there's a sensor in the steering wheel that'll know if your hands are on the wheel. So to start the system up, I've got my screen here in the driver assist mode. You can also kind of zoom in or zoom out if you'd like. Um, and it's showing you either a green or an orange to let you know that it sees the lane. You push this button on here to turn on the adaptive cruise control. And then I push the set button here. Uh, and then when I push this little steering wheel in the center here, that turns on the active driving assistant. And when it's on, the gauge display has a green halo that glows on the side. And it knows, or this is where the system is keeping me in the lane. And it does a really good job. This is very comparable to the last Super Cruise. However, as soon as I take my hands off the wheel, in literally a couple seconds, the steering wheel turns orange because it knows that I'm not touching the wheel. And then if you wait a little bit longer, it starts to flash and it'll tell me to put my hands back on the wheel. Now, Jeep says if I continue to ignore this, it'll eventually, this will turn red. It'll flash the, uh, the uh, or it'll sla stab the brakes and kind of let driver or let the driver know that you're not paying attention to kind of get you to re-engage. So compared to the one that I tried in the old Grand Cherokee, this is so much better, but I'm surprised that Jeep didn't want to go with a true hands-off system. My guess is they're still continuing to work on that, but it's nice to see uh, Jeep and Stellantis upgrading their driver assistance tech because it was in desperate need of an upgrade. Now, in terms of fuel economy, you may want to choose the V6 because it is a little bit better. And on this drive that we took this vehicle on about uh, 60 miles, it averaged 18.6 MPG on the highway, which is not great. But remember, these are early pre-production models. I'll have to wait until I get this car for a week to do my final testing. I'll do zero to 60 testing at that point. Um, I'll talk about how this vehicle is like to live with, but on this short drive, we only have like a couple hours with these cars. So it's hard to get, you know, all of those impressions and whatnot uh, with, you know, with so little time. But in terms of the driver assistance tech, Jeep has also significantly upgraded that. And you guys saw earlier, it, it has much better, you know, near level two autonomy. Uh, so I am impressed with them upgrading that. I find the comfort in this vehicle excellent. I find the quietness to be good. Uh, I find the tech features from the screen to the digital display here. My test, this one is missing the heads up display and the night vision system, but the massaging seats, I put them right up there with the best from Mercedes and from BMW. The completely stitched interior here with the leather is just really, really nice with the real wood. Uh, and Jeep has kind of outdone themselves here. They needed to because they were missing from this segment for so long. And it's you know really great to see Stellantis with an actual modern product because for the longest time they just had the Dodge Durango, which has gotten updates over the years, but it was still very much lipstick on a pig. It was an old car, same thing with the old Grand Cherokee. So 
this new version really takes it up to the next level. So when Jeep introduced the first generation Grand Cherokee back in 1992, it was designed to go head to head with cars like the Toyota 4Runner and Nissan Pathfinder. Jeep essentially wanted a two row larger SUV that gave customers more space versus the Cherokee. Because remember the Cherokee was one of their top sellers. Little did Jeep know the Grand Cherokee would grow to become one of the biggest sellers in their uh, portfolio. They do at least a quarter million sales a year. It's like comparable to like a Honda Accord. And over the years, of course, Jeep smoothed out the styling in the second generation. They moved, of course, over to a third generation model where they introduced an SRT version. They actually have the SRT8 here that has over 400 horsepower. And then this model here, of course, you guys all know this one. This is the fourth generation Grand Cherokee. It was the longest in production from 2011 all the way up to 2021. You can still buy a 2021 model year Grand Cherokee. And that's where things get confusing because the 2021 model year is still based off of the old one. This is the two row model, but Jeep now offers two different 2021 model year Grand Cherokees. And that brings us of course to my final thoughts on the Grand Cherokee L because this 2021 model year is not the same vehicle as that one over here, even though they basically are differentiated by a single L on the badge. But after spending a couple hours driving this new Grand Cherokee L, I'm blown away with what Jeep has done here. They took their time, of course, with their three row family car, but it's exactly what they needed to do because this has all the luxury and tech and space that buyers demand in this segment. And really, I would probably recommend going with the V8 engine because the V6, while it's fine for most people, if you plan on towing heavy loads, you're gonna wanna spend the extra three grand for the V8. And really my only you know, gripe with this car is just how bloody expensive it's gotten. Because as you guys know, compared to that car here, this is a lot bigger. It starts at $38,000 for the base Laredo. Add $2,000 if you guys want four wheel drive. I would do that because this is a Jeep. So really you're gonna be spending around $41,000, $42,000 for a base model. From there on, of course, you can spend around $44,000 for the limit limited around 50-ish thousand for the Overland. This Summit Reserve model is the most expensive model and it starts at around $62,000 for the base version. This one here, of course, with the V8, the advanced tech package, everything and the two-tone color combination, which is like another 700 bucks. Stickers for a grand total of 69,920. 60, nearly 70 grand for a Grand Cherokee is a lot, but I would argue that you're gonna be spending almost $100,000 for something like a GLS Mercedes or an X7. And this gives you pretty darn close to the luxury and tech and power that you're gonna want from a luxury badge vehicle. And essentially what you don't get is a luxury badge, but what Jeep has done here is thrown in a lot of that, but at a more attainable price compared to full on luxury models. But speaking of which, if you guys wanna purchase this vehicle, they are heading to dealers right now. And I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll keep, catch you all in the next video.